Any statesman we speak with are liable to resist our entreaties if they feel Ready, go. This be Mickleburg. These people aren't turned. And the village seems safe enough at least. I came here looking for someone. To be honest, I... I wasn't sure I'd find him here. Let alone all of you. Mm, is that... What are you doing here? Is this... where you live? It is my home. The others... they... they heeded the call. You keep saying that. <sighs> what do you mean? They came here to perform the rite. Just as King Barnabas instructed this village, is that old where they shall cast their souls upon the gentle waters and give themselves to the Lord. Give themselves. Oh Lord, cleanse us of our sin. Let us be reborn in your loving arm. Free us from the torment. ...of this mortal realm. They want to be saved. Forgive me. But did another foreigner, like me, come here? He was probably wearing a cowl. You mean the Traveler from Stone? Yes. He's staying at my house. Toward the rear of the village. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'll go and greet him. They seek the same salvation Barnabas did. At least the third chair still lives. Let's go and find him. Excuse me. 
Are you with the Undying? I am. And so it would appear, are you Lord Rosfield, if I am not mistaken? That's right, and you must be the third chair. I am. Cyril was worried for your safety. He sent me to find you. And I must apologize. I did not mean to trouble the bearer of the burning quill. Much less you, my Lord Marquis. He said that you had failed to report. Is there a reason for that? I came here to study the followers of this new faith. But the more I learned of them, the more my own faith began to falter. You have seen them at their prayers, have you not? They devote themselves to the veneration of their Lord with a fervor I have never seen before, praying night and day that they might be rid of their wicked wills and reborn in their Savior's light. Not that they might be granted respite from their worldly woes, but so that they might continue to serve him, serve him with all of their beings. I too swore to devote my life to the service of my lord and master. And so I would see it through to the end, see these people safe, that they might achieve their dream, that they might do their duty to their lord. Even if it should keep me from doing my duty to mine. You do understand what their dream is, don't you? I do, my lord. They would cast aside their wills and become a Kashyyyk. I know that it may be hard to believe, but to these people, that is the very essence of salvation. Forgive me, my lord, but I must remain here. If you are to return to Master Cyril, I would consider it a great... Did you hear that, my lord? Something is happening. I'll go and find out what. Stay here. Beneath the flood. There must be something I can do. Echoes as well. Found her. Ready, brother? Ready. Meet again. I've killed your kind before.
damn it. a chance to find true salvation by devoting themselves to the service of their Lord just as I did when the undying plucked me from the gutter and gave me a cause to believe in a duty to serve was everything to me and I would not deny them that fulfillment. Even if they must become Akashic in order to achieve it. Forgive me, my Lord Marquis. I did not mean to trouble you with this. My findings. Could you deliver them to Master Cyril for me? Of course. Your duty will be done. Ah, look, my lord. They are saved. They are saved. Found her. I should get this report to Cyril. My Lord Marquis, welcome back. I am glad to see you hale and whole. I'm... He remained in Ash. He died protecting the villagers from an echo. I buried him in Mickleburg. I'm sorry that I couldn't save him. If you could not save him, no one could. The villagers, they were believers in this savior cult. They prayed to their god that they might be unburdened of their wills. Then an ether flood came, and their wish was granted. Your brother sacrificed himself that they might live, even knowing that that life was death by another name. Then he perished defending liberty. A hero's end. For the right to choose how one dies is no less sacred than the right to choose how one lives. Huh. Sid would agree. He wanted to build a world where people could die on their own terms. A noble ambition. To die for one's cause is the most perfect expression of one's faith. It matters not how misguided others might judge one's decision to be, only that the decision is one's own. We live according to the teachings of our order. We believe in them, we protect them, and yes, we die for them. For better or worse, that is our creed. But he, you still believe that what he did was right? I believe that he believed it was. We of the Undying are not slaves, but willing servants. And this was his will, the ultimate expression of it. <sighs> I'd like to know this man's name, Cyril. To know the names of all the Undying who've fallen in the line of duty. They died serving my house. 
It's only right that I remember them. That is my duty. Of course. I shall fetch the Book of Martyrs at once. My lord, it has been, and shall ever be, the greatest honor of my life to serve House Rosfield. Though our duties may differ, yours is no less important. And were they here, I have no doubt but that every one of my fallen brothers and sisters would feel the same. A fortress? The garrison is threatening to pull their sentries from the map. I would speak with this Jew. Saw the captain just now. Your town needs you. You have a moment, Clive. What is it? It's the Duke, unsurprisingly. His eminence has assumed full control of the garrison and put every able-bodied man to work on the fortifications. The town was left all but unguarded. So, And though my dear boys have been characteristically willing to assist him in this, they want for body. So I was wondering if you would lend them your strength, that the people of Northreach might sleep easier, if only for a few nights. Of course. Whatever you need. Thank you, Clive. What would I do without you? Philippe told me he had men stationed. Where can I find the mistress of this estate? Here, my lady. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? My name is Sabine, and it is my displeasure to be the daughter of the Duke of Oriflam, who I understand is causing you and your town no small amount of trouble. I wish to speak to you about what might be done. Very well. Let us speak. I trust you'll forgive me, Clive. Absolutely. Our conversation can wait. Please, proceed. As you know, my father is a most overbearing and supercilious man, and I join you in objecting to his every action. Indeed, I owe you my thanks for continuing to argue against his reckless plan. Yet I fear he is not one to be swayed by reason. He must be made to face the consequences of his action. And who would make him do this? I would. Myself and several other like-minded individuals. Were you to join us, we would surely have the strength to drive him from Northreach for good. Does that not seem a trifle? Drastic action is precisely what is called for. Unless you are content to see your people downtrodden and dispossessed, my father would have it that citizens exist only to serve the Empire. That they should be forced to make every sacrifice to ensure her revival. But he is wrong. It is not the people who must serve the Empire, but the Empire who must serve her people. <sighs> He's always been like this. Scornful of the opinions of anyone he judged beneath him. But he cannot be allowed to ride roughshod over the common folk any longer. We must fight him by all possible means. Fight him respectfully, my lady. Our only chance of saving this town depends upon every one of us uniting against our common enemy. Your father and his followers included. While I understand your frustrations, I cling to the hope that he may yet be won round. False hope, I assure you. But I see that your mind is made up. I shall bother you no longer. If you will extend me the same courtesy, I bid you good day. She certainly has spirit. Indeed. But unfortunately for us, that spirit is only likely to harden the Duke's resolve, which may be enough to seal the fate of this town. Not that she cares. This is all about her and her father. Families. 
I'm sorry, where were we? Ah, yes. I was about to tell you of Philippe's plans for the town watch. But perhaps it's better that you heard them from him. I believe he's in the market, if you'd be so kind as to seek him out. Right away. It's just a pity I cannot join you. I'd like to see the two of you in action together. Your town needs you. I saw the captain just now. What does the dame have to say about all this? So you are content to abandon... Please, I beseech you. If you are a true son of Northreach, you must fight to defend your home. That's exactly what I am doing, milady. Or trying to, at least. The land is crawling with fiends, and someone has to keep watch. Even when our true enemy is hiding in the garrison? Fine. You're not the only able-bodied man in Northreach. Thank you so much for your help. She cornered you too, then? Could hardly get a word in edgeways. Like father, like daughter, eh? She made an uninvited appearance at the Vale earlier, hoping to convince the Dane to join her in fermenting rebellion. <laughs> I bet that went well. Her ladyship seems to have a way with people. Anyway, what brings you here? Our mutual friend thought you might welcome some help. Oh, she did, did she? <laughs> right as always. In fact, you're just the man. We've had some reports, you see. Sightings of... Uh, you know what. They're back. Seems that way. All over, too. We haven't been able to confirm anything yet, but if you're willing, you could go and see what's what. Right. Where should I look? You know Grieger's Weep? One of the sightings places them somewhere on its shores. I'm on my way. Thank you, Clyther. I'll look into one of the other sightings. Let's rendezvous back here later. Ready, go. Damn it. The reports were true. I need to stop them before they get to the town. Enough.
Call that a te- Clive! Are you all right? I am. But it seems the reports were true. The thralls have returned. I dispatched the few that I found, though. Well, that's something, I suppose. But what were they doing south of town? We might be able to fend off an attack from one side or the other. Do you have eyes in the north? Some. I should probably go and have a look, though, just to be sure. You head back to Northridge. What do you mean? Her ladyship's been busy working her magic on the townspeople. Stirring up ill feeling towards her father. But she'll have her marching on the barracks if we're not careful. What? This is exactly what the Dane was afraid of. I'll do what I can to calm things down. Be careful out there, all right? Don't worry, I'm not like you. One sniff of those things and I'm running back to town screaming blue murder. Do you not see, father? The people of Northreach have given enough, and only a fool would ask for more. Listen to me, Sabine. Where would our people be without their country, hmm? The Empire is their sword and their shield. It is she that ensures they can live without fear. And now she teeters on the brink. Without their sword, how will the people fight? Without their shield, how will they protect their kin? Can the unarmed stand against the advancing hordes? No. But there is yet hope. A new shield, a new sword. A new empire. We can rebuild Sandbrek, just as great Grieger wills it. Perhaps we could, father. But we don't want to. Not if it is built on the broken backs of the people. Please, let us not quarrel in the street. You must see that no good will come of this. Our fight is not with each other, but with the threat that draws ever closer to our gates. A threat that your sword has yet to rid us of, your eminence. You will hold your tongue, whore! You may have filled my daughter's head with your heresy, but I will not be corrupted! Corrupted? Your daughter's opinions are her own as you would know if you had ever deigned to listen to her. At least I hope they are your opinions, and not posturing born of a family feud. Northreach deserves better than that. Northreach deserves better than you, Carla. Yes, I know who you are. The slut of Twinside who bedded a brandit. <gasps> Jealous, are you? That a woman might choose a bearer over a pious man of Grieger. Clive! I met a swarm of thralls coming south from Oriflam. Hundreds of them. Too many to count. God, oh, fuck you. There's no work on the fortifications has scarcely begun. We will retreat to Cair Norvant and there make our stand. Did you hear me? That was an order! While this is but a heartfelt plea, let us make our stand here and protect our homes. Protect those that we love. Together, for Northreach! the dame? What are we waiting for? Pikemen to the gates, archers to the roofs. Quickly, come on! But she is but a common whore. Yes. And we'd follow her to the gates of hell.
I've got them spaced out at regular intervals. Whichever direction the thralls strike from, there'll be someone there to meet them. Thank you, Philippe. Rest assured, the people will play their part. The herbalist has donated her stock of medicines to me. Should any of your men be injured, take them to the Vale. We'll see to them there. Thank you, milady. I will. I'll play my part too. You still want for numbers. Unlike the enemy. I only hope I can go some way to evening the odds. Philippe, can I leave the south in your hands? I doubt the thralls by the lake were the last of their number. Of course. I'll lead a party down that way so we don't get taken by surprise. What about you? I'll make my way up the road to Oriflam. I've fought a few of these things. And while I can't promise to hold them all back, I should be able to thin the herd. All right. But take care. Thank you. Both of you. You can thank us when it's over. Till then, madame. So many of them. Not for long.
That looks to be the last of them. I wonder how the others fared. Better hurry back to town. Come on, Toggle. Clive, it's good to see you. And you. The road to Oriflam is clear. How did you and your men fare? Well, we ended up fighting for our lives down by the lake. Took a few nicks, but nothing the girls at the Vale can't put right. Glad to hear it. Well, it seems we've survived. For the time being, at least. I thank you both for answering the call. You were right. And I was wrong about everything. I had thought that the only way to unite the people was under the banner of empire. That without a strong hand to guide them, they would drift apart, to be borne hither and yon by the eddying currents of fate. But you brought them together, not by force, nor by the exercise of goddess-given authority, but by simply being one of them. By knowing what they feel, because you feel it yourself. Our purpose was ever the same, Your Eminence. You were merely distracted by a loftier vision of empire and glory while our eyes beheld matters closer to home. You have the right of it again. As did you, Sabine. His radiance said it himself. Sandbreck is naught without her citizens. I forgot that. And I am sorry. I'm sorry too. I should never have taken things so far. I only wanted you to understand how the people, how I felt. But my anger got the better of me. Do not blame yourself, my dear. This was my do. I should have listened to you. Your eminence, your ladyship, I do not doubt that you came here with the best of intentions. But I believe the same could be said of us all. We all want safety, security, prosperity. Not just for Northreach. And we may yet achieve it. If only we work together. Will you join us? Yes. Thank you, Your Eminence. Now that that is settled, I must go and see to the wounded. The Vale's doors are always open to any soldier in... And today there are more than ever before. Madam Isabel is a... In these... I see that it is not men like me who should lead the realm. You're right. If only I'd listened to her when I had the chance. Forgive me for saying so, my lady. But you still do. The dame said it herself. We can turn things around. And that goes for you. You're one of us now. One of you. Well said, Captain. Let this be a new beginning. Well, since there's nothing more to be done here, I should see if Isabel needs any help moving the wound. 